Believers in 
Springfield's Facebook Live. Glad that you um, have chosen to be here with us this morning. And uh, just again, a big welcome to you. Uh, we miss you, we love you, and uh, we appreciate that we can all come together like this until we can come back together in the building. So we are going to start today with our awesome Mitch. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're enjoying this lovely weekend. It's been awfully nice outside, and it's going to be even nicer from what I'm hearing. Fall is falling. It's not coming in. It's wonderful. Winter, though, man, the winter can take a hike. But I love the fall. It's so good with the smells and the pumpkin spice lattes. <clears throat> anyway, good morning. It's so lovely to see you all. Well, if you would please join us in our mission statement. Our mission is to encourage and inspire spiritual and personal growth by empowering each other to be authentically all that we came here to be. And our statement of faith, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. Uh, I hope you're gonna enjoy the music today. The band is awesome. We had a good time yesterday and uh, laid down some sweet tracks for you guys. Maybe not sweet, some prayerful tracks, maybe not prayerful, some Loving and what you gotta enjoy the music is kind of what I'm saying. So, yeah, enjoy that. <clears throat> if you please join me in my in our affirmation. Our affirmation is: I am a divine being following a path to my highest good. Once again, I am a divine being following a path to my highest good. 
The Bible shares the story of Solomon, a king whose rule was not without challenges. His efforts to solve problems by himself met with mixed results initially. But Solomon learned that he had within him the wisdom he sought. So too, the Spirit of God within me is my answer through any challenge. A block to my spiritual achievement can occur if I become worried and distracted by many things. That's Luke 10, 41. In my human thinking, I remove it by shifting my attention from uncertainty to the deep certainty within me. No matter what my ego mind tells me, there is absolutely nothing to fear when I live the truth that I am here on a spiritual assignment. I am a divine being following a path to my highest good. Isaiah forty two sixteen is our scripture. It is, I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. And now, if we can go to our prayer. <clears throat> so for Sunday, September 27th of 2020, woo, what a year. <sighs> As we enter into prayer, for those who prayer has been requested, please know that you can request prayer for yourself or a loved one by calling the church at 417-887-2214 and leaving a message by email at ccunity at sbcglobal.net. For this week, prayer was requested for Anne, Mary, Raymond, Deanna, Audra, Caitlin, Caitlin, McKenna, Paula, Franz, Caitlin, Garrett, Taylor, Alice, Andy, Julian, Selena, Duncan, and Alex. In our continued prayers, we hold Sharon and Rusty Chafin Smith for the loss of Sharon's daughter, Tina and Sharon's grandson, Cody, who has lost both of, the, both of his parents in the last year. Gently close your eyes and take a deep breath, becoming centered in the presence of God in us, as us, and through us. The knowledge of the presence of God calms and soothes our very being and allows us to feel safe and secure. We breathe deeply again and forgive all we believe have wronged us, including ourselves and we release any unease for the present and the future. We dedicate this prayer to the equality, the acceptance, the respect of all peoples on this earth. We take this time to visualize the healing of the planet, to visualize the healing of our country, the healing of bodies, minds, and affairs for all. We also unfold and infuse ourselves with love so that we have the capacity to love others. We choose to be generous, to be kind, to be understanding, to be open to all, especially those whose beliefs or needs may be different from our own. We are infinitely grateful for all our blessings, and we accept and rejoice in the blessings for the future. Life is good. God is good. And so it is and never will be. Amen. Well, I hope you guys have a fun day planned up of watching football and taking naps. Oh, wait, that's my plan. Yeah, watching football and taking naps. I'm old, and naps are good for me. <clears throat> Have a great weekend. I can't wait to see you next week. Namaste to you all. Take care. And as always, thank you so much, Mitch. We love your levity and um, humor that you always bring to our Sunday mornings. Um, thank you for that lightness. And thank you just for your dedication and commitment to this. And so now we're going to continue with a time of meditation. So as Paul rings the prayer bowl, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and uh, just take a few deep breaths as we center into these moments. time remembering what it is that we say together every week that there is only one presence and one power in my life let us also hold our affirmation for this week 
which is I am a divine being following my path to my highest good. As I lean into and focus on this one presence and one power that I know is for me, that I know is supporting me, that I know is always working on the greater behalf of my good and the greater good of all, I open myself up to trusting that whatever it is that is desiring to emerge through me and as me, that every next right step will be there. What we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that if there is a desire that is imprinted in our heart, that all the steps are already prepared for us. Whatever that risk might be today, perhaps it is asking someone to marry you, or perhaps it is going back to school, perhaps it's retiring, perhaps it's asking somebody on a date. Perhaps it's taking up a hobby that has been a desire of yours for a long time. Perhaps it is learning a different language. Whatever it is, whatever it is that your soul is seeking to express through you as you today, know that the next steps will occur at the right and perfect time. So as we move into about a minute of silence, I just invite you to open up your entire being and feel the love that surrounds you, feel the love that rises up from within you that is always, always supporting you as we move into the silence. You are seen, you are known, you are unconditionally loved, and you are fully supported in this now moment and always. And for this, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Mother, Father, God, amen and amen. So, you know, In the realm of our lives, we forget sometimes that truly everything is holy, everything is sacred. So John Russ and our band are gonna do a song now called Holy Now by Peter Mayer. Each week on Sundays we would go to church and pay attention to the priest and he would read the holy word, consecrate the holy bread, everyone would kneel and bow. Today the only difference is everything is holy now. Everything, everything. Everything is holy now And when I was in Sunday school We would learn a 
about the time Moses split the sea in two And Jesus made the water wide And I remember feeling sad Miracles don't happen still Today I can't keep track Cause everything's a miracle Everything, everything Everything's a miracle Wine from water is not so small But I need a better magic trick Is there anything that's here at all? And so the challenging thing becomes Not to look for miracles But finding where there isn't one John Russ and our band, I'm always just in awe of your musicality and just how beautiful, what an amazing job you all do. So thank you so very much. And isn't it true? You know, it's, it's really opening ourselves up and living from that awareness every day that everything is holy, everything is sacred, that this life itself is a miracle and that miracles are occurring around us all the time. And when we have our, our inner eyes and our heart open, we are gonna see those things so much more and embrace them and celebrate them. So we are in a series um, on the book, This Life is Joy by Dr. Roger Teal. And so we're gonna do a little bit of a, um, a review on this. We talked about the seven pillars of truth. Uh, this instant is love, this being is light, this world is consciousness, this idea is substance, this relationship is oneness, this journey is surrender, this life is joy. These are truths that we talked about that we have the opportunity to really lean into in a deeper way, to, to spend time with each of these things and open ourselves up to how we can deepen our experience with these things. And then he talked about the nine portals of, of transformation and these are experiences that we have. And many, many times we look at these experiences and we call them bad or we think that they are against us. But how Roger 
helps us to see these things is that all these things are actually opportunities. They're portals for our transformative experience, for the evolution of us as human spiritual beings walking this planet. So things like this fear is friend, this problem is possibility, this judgment is yearning, this uh, conflict is forgiveness, this disease is discovery, this change is birth, this uncertainty is magic, this desire is fulfillment, and today we are talking about this risk is greatness. So I'd like to invite you to share in this affirmation with me together. I was born to make manifest the glory of God. So let's say that one more time and I just want you to really feel the energy of this together. I was born to make manifest the glory of God because that's what you were born for was to bring forth more of this beautiful essence of God that you are into every aspect of your life. Now, Paul this morning um, did his talk uh, at the 915 service um, based on a book by Mary Neal. And uh, he he used this quote that is not by Mary, but I this is by Charles Stanley, but I loved this quote. And it says, we are either in the process of resisting God's truth or in the process of being shaped and molded by his truth. So, and, and what we would say in the eye of the storm uh, that we're doing on Wednesday nights is I am either in the way of God or I am the way of God. And, you know, that one is a pretty easy one for me to sit back and go, well, gee, which would I rather be in the way of God? Because I know my experience when I'm in the way of God is pretty tumbling. But when I open myself up to being the way of God, even when I have those stumbling and tumbling experiences, I come back to my center much quicker and I'm able to be present to life in a different way. So um, I wanna start with a quote by Mark Twain and it's 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the things that you did do. So throw off the bowline, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream and discover. And, you know, it's interesting because I think that it's always important to talk about this, to talk about how our tendency is to play small. Our tendency is to fight for our limitations. Our tendency is to uh, to let fear get in the way of us really living the life that is desiring to be lived again as us and through us. Um, so I like when Mark Twain says, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than the things that you did do. And really that's when people are with pe people who are in the process of crossing over, they usually talk about their regrets, the things that they didn't do, the people that they didn't tell that they loved them or the adventures that they didn't take. So let's open ourselves up to, uh, to what risk is about today. Now, Roger tells us that risk has always been essential for advancement, for unleashing bold creativity, for greater aliveness and fulfillment. And as with fear, risk can be our friend. Wait, what? Let's look at what risk means in the dictionary. A situation exposing one to danger, harm, or loss. It's no wonder that when we talk about the word risk, we equate it with something that we want to push away, something that is fearful because by its very definition, it, it's um, a situation exposing us to danger, harm, or loss. But what I want to share with you today is that risk doesn't have to be that, that that's just a mindset that we have been given, but that risk gives us such incredible opportunities to, to do things that we never thought that we could do, to be in relationship in ways we never imagined we could be in relationship and to literally, my friends, to literally change the world. So um, Donna, Don Markova had a near-death experience that opened her to the safety net of life. And in a short passage that, that is titled, I Will Not Live an Unlived Life, she shares this. I will not die an unlived life. I will not live in fear of falling or catching fire. I choose to inhabit my days, to allow my living to open me, to make me less afraid, more accessible, to loosen my heart until it becomes a wing, a torch, a promise. 
I choose to risk my significance to live so that which so that which came to me as seed goes on to the next as blossom and that which came to me as blossom goes on as fruit. And Helen Keller said, security is mostly a superstition. It does not exist in nature. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. And those are very, very, very true words that she spoke there. Well, here's the thing, is that we tend to talk about risk more than doing risk. We tend to talk about change more than actually doing change. So Roger asked the question, can you imagine where your life would be if you had resisted all of your leaps in life? You know, what if you had refused to risk walking or risk riding a bike or risk um, that first kiss or risk, um, you know, asking, the, you know, your first girlfriend or boyfriend out? Because the reality is to be truly alive means that we are going to risk, that we are going to take continuous leaps. You know, every time that we leave our home, we take risks. Every time that a couple walks down the aisle in marriage, that's taking a huge leap. And every time that we take a deep breath and tell the fierce truth, that honest, authentic truth, we risk. Um, but just about everything, again, that takes us forward in life, in life is propelled by a leap, by a risk. So the following is um, from an unknown author. But it says to laugh, is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. To reach out to another is to risk involvement. To expose feelings is to risk rejection. To place your ideas, your dreams before a crowd is to risk ridicule. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To go forward in the face of overwhelming odds is to risk failure but risks must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing. He may avoid suffering and sorrow, but he cannot learn, feel, change, grow, love, live. Chained by his certitudes, he is a slave. He has forfeited his freeman, freedom only a person who risks is free. And I would even go so far as to say that the person who risks nothing, when it says may avoid suffering and sorrow, I don't believe that. I think that it is not in taking those risks that we really suffer and we feel sorrowful. So we have been talking about, um, and especially last week, we talked about our dreams and our desires, about you know really bringing those things out and dusting them off and, and asking what if. And in that, I um, really highly recommended that we create either a written vision or we create vision boards, we create affirmations, uh, we watch our words. We wanna, we wanna really get our mind focused on our dreams, on our desires, on that which is desiring to emerge um, as us and then doing whatever the next steps are. And this is where risk comes in. And here's the thing for me, in my own life, I have found that um, my journey starts out as one small step at a time. And it's, you know, I try to be open to those inspired steps, but there always comes a point when I am invited to take a leap, when I am invited to risk, to, to say yes to that unknown, uh, something that is that is uh, that I don't know maybe what the next steps are. So I've shared this before, but it's relevant, um, and I haven't talked about it in a long time. But that was in 2007. There were ten of us from the church that um, decided to take a physical leap of faith, and we went to Mount Vernon to the airport. We took some instruction on how to skydive, and one by one, with our instructor hooked up to our backs, we went up 10,000 feet in a small old plane and jumped out. And we did call it our leap of faith. And I gotta tell you, it was exhilarating. So I wanna share an example of that leap of faith coupled with um, an you know, something that had come up for me um, earlier uh, in, in my experience. So years and years ago, when I was actually living in Ohio, so this was like 40 years ago and 50 years ago, uh, and. I sang in the choir at church and I would sing duets sometimes with my sisters and I loved singing in church, but I had a bad experience one time which totally embarrassed me. 
and I put myself in the jail of my own making. And for years and years, I never put myself in the position to sing in front of people um, because I didn't want to be ridiculed or made fun of or to, to feel that feeling. So I was, this was before I became the spiritual leader. I was doing a talk and I decided that my talk was going to be about impossible dreams. So I thought, well, what is, you know, my impossible dream? And it was singing in church. Well, what can I do about it? So from the skydiving aspect, this is where we are now deciding to make plans that we're going to go skydiving. Um, so we, we make the appointment to go. So then I call the choir director, who was our choir director at the time. And uh, I left her, she's a vocal coach too, so I left her a message telling her I wanted to take voice lessons. And it, interestingly enough, as the universe has it, she happened to show up at church at lunch that day, which she never came by the church, and I set up lessons with her. So here I am, I'm taking a step toward my dreams. Now it's a little uncomfortable, but overall I'm okay. So this is now where we're at the skydiving place and we're starting to learn um, about skydiving and learning how to safely skydive. So then I decide that not only am I going to, um, you know, set up this time to, to learn how to sing better, I'm going to sing at church on Sunday morning and I'm going to come in from the back of the church singing. So from a skydiving perspective, this is where I'm now getting in the plane and I'm beginning to ascend up, up, up. This is where the fear is starting to come in. This is where I know now that I am risking. So after a while, I decide that it's time to take that leap of faith. But this is when I feel my instructor hook up to me, representing to me that God always has my back, that I'm never alone, that I'm never doing this alone, that I truly have nothing to fear, that I can trust whatever this free fall is, whether I fail miserably, not on the skydive, but whether I fail miserably in singing, or whether I do a good job. Um, so um, I just, I loved that that was my vision, was that God always has my back. So on the Sunday that I'm doing the talk, I come back in from the back of the church singing, you know, what a beautiful morning, scared to death, literally feeling like I was going to die. And in skydiving, this was the point where I was stepping out of the plane onto the step of the plane, holding onto the crossbar of the wing, looking up and saying, ready, set, go, and taking the leap. And I got to tell you, for me, the leap was so scary, both on the level of singing on a Sunday morning, but also obviously on the level of jumping out of that plane. Um, but I knew that I was su supported all the way. Well, here's the thing. I have a huge fear of heights and it was a lot worse even back then. So the physical risk for me was huge. But I want to tell you what I did. When I was in that plane, I was I would only look straight out. And when I had to walk out on and on the side step of the plane and and hold on to that crossbar, the only thing I did was I kept my vision straight ahead. I would not let myself look down because I knew that if I looked down, I would be looking right into my fear. And if I kept my vision forward, then I could keep my faith centered. Now, again, this is for me about keeping my vision on that greater realm, my vision on God, on truth, on, on love, on peace, on hope, on possibility and potentiality, um, on all of that. And when we look at scripture and we look at the scripture where, uh, you know, Peter was in the boat and he sees, you know, somebody walking across the water and he sees that it is Jesus. And he says, Jesus, man, I want to walk on water. And so Jesus says, well, come on, come on out here and walk on water. And so Peter, is looking at Jesus as he steps out of the boat and he starts walking on water and it was like whoa this is so cool and then he looked down and the moment that he looked down he sank and then Jesus went out held his hand and he looked once again at Jesus and got up and walked and of course the the metaphysical uh, aspect of that story is that as we keep ourselves centered on that Christedness of our being which is which is the godness um, then we are more apt to keep our focus on our on the vision and away from the fear. And the more we keep our focus on the vision, on God, on the, we are supported, the more that those things are going to open up for us. So in his book, Roger shares a story about a woman named Pam 
who had assumed the, the lead role in a family business um, that was about training and selling the sales of horses. It was an incredibly lucrative business, giving her a, over a six-figure income um, a year. But Pam had a horse named PJ that scared her some because P PJ reared a little bit. And Pam had a friend who um, had a horse that fell on her and she was in a wheelchair. So her vision was on the fear. Her vision was on what could happen. It was too much of a risk to take. Then she got involved in Rogers Church, began taking classes, and she realized that what she was really missing was she was missing faith. So she decided that she was going to ride PJ. So she got on PJ, grabbed the mane of his hair, of her hair, PJ's hair, gave her a little slap, and PJ began to leap and to rear and to buck. But Pam stayed on for 30 minutes. And after about two weeks, she was able to handle PJ well. Well, um, here's what she said about this. She said, riding PJ scared me, but I knew that if I gave into the fear the next thing would scare me too. Then the next, then the next, until I couldn't do anything. So I worked through the fear and I became a better horse trainer for it. PJ made me stretch. PJ made me tap into resources, talents, and abilities I didn't even know I had. They were lying dormant in me all those years. PJ woke this up in me, which would open me to waves of further change and growth. And what a beautiful way to look at that. Well, here's the thing. She did such a good job with training PJ that people started coming to her to train their horses. So all of a sudden now this business is really booming. But the story didn't end there because after a period of time, and we've talked about this um, either last week or the week before, PJ started getting these nudges of something else that she wanted to be doing. But the horse training business was a family business and she felt obligated to stay in that. So we talked about this where there's this something, again, that is really trying to emerge. It's something that she was really wanting to do. This is something that was really speaking to her soul. So again, remember, the law of attraction isn't just black and white. The law of attraction is responding to the deepest desires of our being. She may have been in the horse business, but her deepest desire was something else. So what happened? A horse, kicked her, a horse kicked her in the knee and shattered her knee. She was literally kicked out of the horse business. Now, this actually ended up being a really good thing for her because what she had really wanted to do was stand-up comedy. So she went for it. Immediately, the doors began swinging wide open. She was given an MC opportunity at one of the best comedy clubs in Denver, and after about a year, she was promoted to the lead act. So was she scared? She, she said absolutely she was. And she did have some financial challenges, but this is what she said about that. They were simply PJ showing up in a different form to help me tap into resources, talents, and abilities that have been dormant. This was a real breakthrough for me. So here's the thing, is that the challenge for most of us when we're looking at stepping out into something is that we don't have the entire roadmap for it. Most of the time, all we can see is just the step that is right in front of us. And most risks are really leaps into the unknown. And it does take a considerable amount of faith. So for those of you that remember the Indiana Jones movie, I just love this as an analogy for that having to really believe and, and, and lean into that that next step is going to be there. So here's a, here's a clip from the movie. <laughs>
I absolutely love that. And I just feel that that, isn't that how we feel sometimes? That, oh my gosh, I have no idea if I'm gonna be supported. I have no idea what my next step is, but I am willing to move out in faith. I love the story and it's, and it's just a story, but about a, a man and a son and a man you know, told his son he needed to go out at night and feed the animals that were in the barn. And he gave him a lantern and um, opened up the front door. And he's like, but dad, I can only see um, to the end of the sidewalk. And he said, well, son, then take the lantern and walk to the end of the sidewalk. So he gets to the end of the sidewalk and he looks back at his dad and he goes, but dad, I can only see um, to the gate. And his dad says, well, son, then take the lantern and go to the gate. And he gets to the gate and he says, well, dad, I can only see to the middle of the sidewalk to the barn. Well, son, take the lantern and go to the middle of the sidewalk. Well, dad, I can only see to the barn. Take the lantern and go to the barn, you know, and then he goes into the barn. And that's what it's like for us a lot of times. And the thing is, as human beings, we don't like not knowing what that next step is. And yet, Again, when we look back in our lives, we can see how, how we didn't know, but yet every next step was there. And that every next step led us to where we are today and to the people that we are today and the experiences that we had. So I'm gonna inundate you for a minute with some scripture that reminds us how guided and how supported we are. Isaiah 42, 16, I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. Isaiah 30, 21, whether you turn to the right or to turn to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Isaiah 58, 11, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Proverbs 16, 9, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Proverbs 1, 5, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Psalms 119, 105, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Psalm 37, 23, 24, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall for the Lord upholds with his hand. This one is one of my favorites. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And Isaiah 58, 11, and the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones and you will be like a watered garden. I think I already did that one. And like a spring whose waters do not fail. Obviously, this is telling us over and over and over again that we are not alone. That there, that there is something, and you know, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. But the higher order of beings that are here, and they are here for us, and they are guiding us. And ours is to get out of our human mind and open ourselves up to this divine guidance that is always here. Roger talks about championing the emerging good and that human progress has always relied on bold and timely risks. And it's certainly true in our country's history. He said, consider the risks of ending slavery, such a great stain upon uh, the United States heritage. 
Lincoln risked the continuance um, of a young nation as well as his own life to stand on principles of justice, equality, and emancipation. Others did the same in their own time. Others like Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., John Lewis, and most recently, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who made her transition, but who was a powerhouse and who, who risked so much to make a difference in our country and in our world. But I want to bring it a little bit closer to home, and I'm going to talk about some of you, and you aren't going to know who I'm talking, I mean, you're going to know who I'm talking about in a second, um, but I didn't actually ask permission, but I, this is public information. So right here in the midst of us, Dwayne Coppler, at the age of 75, began his hike on the Pacific Crest Trail by himself. Let's talk about risk there. How about Norma Vincent, who at 85 continues to ballroom dance? Now, I don't know during this COVID time if that's happening, but I do know that before this time, Norma was doing ballroom competitions. That's risk. Teresa Amesqua, who um, only spoke Spanish, um, but through perseverance, learned English, and she speaks it very well. But she created a life here for her daughter, Tanya, and for her mother, Elena, and here she is, she is taking every opportunity to take classes to become a licensed Unity teacher right here through Unity and, and sharing her gift. We're talking about risk there. Jane Tyndall, who um, up until this COVID thing, traveled, just, just went on bus trips and traveled all the time. You know, that's a risk to go out and to travel on your own like that. But, I mean, with the bus group, but still, um, but because she wanted to be involved in life. Mary Lou Rao, she embraces her limitations as she is aging, and I'm telling you, she does not complain about them. What she does do is she does what she can within those limitations. She steps out and she risks to be present to life. And once we do get back into the church again on a regular basis, I look forward to Mary Lou being there um, on Wednesdays as our hostess. Paula Arm Connect, um, sold a home that she lived in for many, many years, a home with just uh, incredible memories for her. But she sold her home to build a tiny home on some land with her family. That was certainly a risk, but she absolutely loves it. Paul Day, he, um, a, like five or six years ago, decided to go on a bicycle ride across the um, northeastern part of the country, clear up into the upper part, tip of Maine, by himself. Never done anything like that. That's a huge risk. And I love, you know, Stephanie Twyman took a risk to show up at work, and you know what? She ended up getting COVID. And although I admit that I did not ask her, I just know Stephanie well enough to know her attitude is so good that she does not regret having gone back to help people feel great a bit again by getting their hair back in shape. And, you know, this goes on and on and on. And so let's not think of these risks as always having to be these ginormous things that we're doing. But it's, you know, sometimes telling somebody that you love them. Maybe in your family dynamic, saying I love you isn't a normal thing. But maybe you could be the one to take that risk to start that, saying I love you on a regular basis. You know, there's so many things that, that call us to be more than what we currently are, to live life more fully than we're living it. And again, ours is to say yes. Henry David Thoreau, most of us know this, said, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live a life that he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. He will pass an invisible boundary. New universal and more liberal laws will begin to establish themselves around and within him, and he will live life with a, a license of a higher order of being. So we're going to take this um, verse by verse, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams. And so what is your direction and are you advancing confidently? Because this calls us to own our authenticity and it also causes, calls us to own our future now. And this isn't always easy. And why isn't it always easy? Because we all get used to each other being a certain way. That's what we know and that's what we expect. We create 
a certain identity of each other. So as we begin to walk confidently towards our authenticity, it can freak people out a little and it can change things in your life and you must know that. But this is all the more reason why you must advance confidently in the direction of your dream, of your inner knowing, of the authenticity that is it is um, just, just trying to emerge as you and through you keep your vision on your dream. And then it says, and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Again, what is the life that you've imagined? And as we talked about, we must do the work. To live the life that we've imagined, we do that by acting as if it is already done. So what would I do if I was living my dream right now? Really feel into that and then start bringing that into your daily experience. So for example, if you've always wanted to take up painting, but you were either too scared, didn't feel good enough about yourself to do it, or you just didn't have the time to do it, but that de desire is still there, do something about it. You know, look up uh, maybe taking some beginning painting lessons or get on a Facebook group about painting, but do something today that your future self will thank you for. That's principle. Act as if believing, bring it into the now moment. And notice here it says endeavors to live the life and realize that we're not going to do it perfectly. But Roger reminds us, don't make agreements with struggle, lack, or limitation. It's not that we deny that challenges or limits exist, but we also don't make agreements with them and give them power in our life. So when those things come up, we recognize them. Do I need to do something about it? Then get behind me because this is what I know to be true. And I know that God has my back. I know that that these higher order beings are, are guiding me into my next step. And then it says, and he will pass an invisible boundary. And that's because these boundaries are real constructs of our mind. And we talked about this on Wednesday evening that Maria Nemeth talks about these structures of knowing. And these are all of the agreements that we have made about the nature of life, about what's possible, what's not possible about our limitations. So when, when we keep focused on our vision and on our dreams, we move beyond those structures of knowing. But more so, passing that invisible boundary is about moving us into a deeper state of trust, a deeper state of faith. Knowing that you don't know, but yet you do know because you've experienced it. And moving into that place where, you know what, I'm okay that I don't know because I've had enough evidence in my life to know that the next step is going to be there. And then a new universal and more liberal laws will begin to establish themselves around and within me. And as we free ourselves from these structures of knowing, we find that things uh, begin to flow, to evolve and work in ways that we couldn't before have imagined. And we really start to realize that there's something greater working with us on behalf of us, that it is truly responding to our deepest desires, to our, our heart's deepest and truest calls. And that's why, again, it's important to stay focused on your vision, on your dream, on your goal, on your desire. And then it says, and he will live with the license of a higher order of beings. We are co-creators, my friends, and there is help all around us. We can actually feel the energy of something helping us. And we see that of ourselves, we could not have created this magnificent dreams. It becomes far greater and grander than our limited human minds could have vision. And that, my friends, is great news. So in closing, I wanna share with you a quote by Gil Guillaume Apollinaire, and it is come to the edge. We can't, we're afraid. We can't, we will fall. Come to the edge. And they came and he pushed them and they flew. And here's what I know for us. Whatever it is, whether it's a, a, a the small thing, whether it's a big, magnificent dream, if it has been with you, then it is, it is encoded in your spiritual DNA. It is there to be lived. It is there for life to be brought into it. It is there to be expressed through you and as you. All you need to do, my friends, is to get focused on it, 
to keep your vision on it and to allow this beautiful thing that we call God to do the rest. And I say to you, namaste. Okay. So now we have this opportunity in our service to support our ministry uh, with our tithes and our love offerings, our consistent giving. Um, so just want to encourage you to continue with your wonderful support. Thank you to all of us because we're all participating in, um, in supporting financially Unity of Springfield. You can go to our website at unityofspringfield.org and donate there. You can give through our Tithely app, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. You can download that. You can go through PayPal at ccunity at sbcglobal.net or you can write a check to 2214 East Seminole, Springfield, Missouri, 65804. And again, thank you to all of us for keeping Unity of Springfield a thriving spiritual community. So now John and our band are going to bless us now with a song called Dust by Erica Luckett and Amy Hero. It's like stepping off a hundred foot pole. It's like holding your breath, holding your breath, but letting go. It's like giving into the bottom, giving out. It's like giving up, giving up. Precious doubt. With your fears laughing as you fall Can you see it all intertwined Tangled vines, twisted lines We are handfuls of dust We are pieces of sky Thank you to our cameraman. 
uh, Beck Brashears and Paul Day. Thank you to Dee Richardson for our prayer. And a couple of announcements for you. I uh, wanted to remind you that our Planet Unity 5K is coming up October 10th. You still only have until the 29th of September to sign up for that. You can either do it virtually or in person for only $20. So I encourage you to sign up for that, become a part of that. We are also going to be asking for volunteers uh, to help with the 5K that day, but also we're gonna take what we have collected at the church and do an outdoor yard sale that day as well. So please, if you get the call to help, please, please say yes and mark your calendar for October 10th. You know, one of the things that um, throughout this year that we haven't been able to do are our normal fundraisers. And those are part of our what we budget for income. So any way that we have to create income is a wonderful way and this is a way that you can use your time and your talent to uh, be a part of that. Um, also remember that the little library is open uh, for uh, food donations. I would want to say a huge thank you to Lisa Landrigan and Amy Burnett who donated the um, supplies and Lisa Landrigan rebuilt this ramp on the north side of our sanctuary. So thank you so much to Amy and Lisa. We appreciate you so much. Um, that That's an amazing, um, amazing thing. I uh, wanna let us let you know also that we will be online through October. Our date that we are planning on coming back into the church is November 8th, and I wanna tell you why. So uh, Springfield has these uh, guidelines in place through October 15th that would only allow us to have a certain number in our sanctuary. Well, Paul and I are getting married on the 16th and I will be gone uh, the last Sunday in October and that first Sunday in November. So that's why we decided to go ahead and have our open date as November 8th. So let's all hold the vision that that is gonna happen. We will be doing it very safely. We will be taking temperatures. We will be requiring masks. We will be social distancing. Uh, we will be taking information uh, for contact tracing. Uh, but let's hold the vision that that is going to happen uh, on November 8th. Also, uh, again, if you have not taken the opportunity to watch the 915 Adult uh, New, New Thought World Religions class, I just encourage you to do so. You can watch it at 915 or you can watch it at another point. But literally, our facilitators are taking books and giving us just such amazing parts of these books. This next week, Paul is gonna be our speaker again, and he's gonna be speaking on the six practices to move you towards your dreams based on the book, How to Live a Life of Adventure. Uh, the Eye of the Storm class, we have our fourth class uh, on Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, this information will be on this Facebook page. You're welcome to join us even if you haven't yet. Um, also, remember that we have our Uniteens and Teens on Zoom at 1045 on Sunday mornings. And Rachel Willis will be um, with our young kiddos at 1215 on the Unity of Springfield Youth and Families group page. So we are now going to close with our prayer for protection. Let us feel the energy of this going out to the world around us together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So now I'm going to invite us to stand up, get our bodies moving, literally bring the energy of the reality that we are alive with the Spirit of God by Dale Worley with our band. Here we go. One, two,
blessed week. I know that uh, you are going to allow whatever it is that is wanting to express through you to express through you. We love you. We miss you. And we behold the beautiful light that each and every one of you are. And I say to you, namaste.